Thanks to graphene, ultra-high pitch sonar is now possible. Graphene, you are like the Superman of materials. Or would sonar make you more like Batman? I don't, I don't know things about comics. Hi, science lovers. Julian here for DNews. I'm sure the majority of you know what sonar is, but just in case, I'll explain. Sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging, and it involves sending out a sound wave and bouncing it off an object. Timing how long it takes to come back will tell you how far away the object is, which is the same principle as radar. Humans use it mostly underwater because the mechanical sound waves travel well through it, while the electromagnetic waves from radar get attenuated by the water much more quickly. People with satellite TV who lose signal on really stormy days know what I'm talking about. Sonar is said to have been invented in 1490 when Leonardo da Vinci stuck a tube in water and listened to ships pass. But really, a tube? Does that count as an invention? That's just sloppy, Leo. Anyway. Sonar has been around long before da Vinci came along and invented everything. Famously, dolphins and bats use high frequency sounds to echolocate and communicate. We're talking really high frequency too. A human can hear sounds from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And that's if they have amazing hearing and they're young and never go to concerts. We hear best where human speech lives in the 1,000 to 5,000 hertz range or 1 to 5 kilohertz. Some species of bats can hear as low as 1 kilohertz too, but a bat's hearing may be as high pitched as 200 kilohertz, literally 10 times higher than a human's. It's not easy for our equipment to detect or emit sounds that high. Dynamic microphones work when sound waves vibrate a diaphragm, which in turn cause a magnet to move around a wire and generate an electrical current. And speakers work the same way, but in reverse. The diaphragms in these mics and speakers are usually paper or plastic, which aren't sensitive enough for detecting ultra-high frequencies. Now, thanks to the wondiferous material of graphene, a huge range of frequencies can be detected and reproduced. It's because graphene is so thin, it's just, say it with me now, one atom thick. Scientists at UC Berkeley realized this would make it an ideal diaphragm and have created microphones and speakers that work well below 20 hertz and all the way up to 500 kilohertz. Yeah, you thought you were bad bats? Now what? Actually, studying bats was one of the first tests of these new microphones. The researchers took them to a nearby park to test them out and found the mics pick up the bats' chirps well across the whole spectrum. Plus, they're so small they can actually be mounted on the bats themselves. Aside from studying bats, the mics and speakers could have loads of other uses. The speakers can emit sharp pulses at high frequencies, meaning they can be used for measuring distance much more accurately than traditional methods. The researchers envision a world where ultrasound is part of your cell phone's arsenal for communication. I'm thinking that's not creative enough, though. What about a personal sonar device for the blind? Or since these graphene speakers are 99% efficient at turning electricity into sound compared to the 8% efficiency of your headphones, why not have some killer and lightweight portable stereos? The researchers even claim the sound waves can penetrate objects like steel, something radio waves can't do. If you can convert those sound waves into an image, X-ray vision, anyone? Come on, let's innovate, guys. One company that's innovating all over the place is Intel, with processors, wearables, data centers, devices on the internet of things, and of course, in your Mac or PC, Intel is driving innovation. If there's Intel inside, you're gonna have a better experience outside. They're creating breakthrough technologies that make amazing experiences possible, and they like us, so they make DNews possible too. That sonar is pretty incredible, but nature is an arms race, and some moths have evolved a way to go stealth mode. Check out the amazing story here. Plus, if the moth is in mid-flight, they don't really have the option to just stop flapping. So Luna moths have developed another strategy. Their sweeping tails throw off the bat's echolocation. How would you use these graphene mics and speakers? Do you have some ingenious use I didn't come up with? Well, let us know in the comments or Facebook or Twitter at DNews. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.